Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. What is important to you? If someone got to know you, would they describe you as someone who is kingdom-minded? Someone who is passionate with a strong faith and a commitment to the things of the future, specifically the establishment of the kingdom of God. Does your life reflect how you live, what you do, how you speak, how you invest? Does it all reflect that you have a strong faith and a commitment in the establishment of the kingdom of God? It is those type of individuals that could answer yes to those questions that Messiah is looking for, that he will use, that he will invest in. Take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew in chapter 13. The book of Matthew in chapter 13. Now, we've been studying the parable of the sower. And Messiah spends a great deal of time on this parable. And we know that the sower, he sows seed, and that seed is the word of God. We can say it another way. It is heavenly truth, and we're going to see that it's truth related to the kingdom of God. So Messiah is teaching. He's speaking about truth, specifically the truth related to the kingdom of God. And we see something. There are four types of soil. Now we've learned something. That the number four is related to the world. And the truth of God goes out into the world. But how are individuals going to respond? Well, that's what he's going to remind us of in this study. So Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to pick up where we left off in verse 16. And it's very clear here that Messiah is speaking to the disciples and he's emphasizing at the beginning what a great opportunity that they have because they have seen things and heard things. But what about you and me? Well, that same thing can be said for you and me. Why is that? Because we have this book. In this book is recorded perfectly the truth of God. We have everything that we need concerning the ministry of Messiah, what Yeshua, that is Jesus of Nazareth, what he did in those three, three and a half years of his earthly ministry, what he taught, what he did, miracles and such. And therefore, we are extremely blessed to have this revelation. But the question is, what are you doing with it? Are you someone that the word of God, that seed of truth, that message of the kingdom, when it is given to you, are you good soil or not? Well, notice what he says here in verse 16, again, speaking to his disciples, and he says, Blessed are your eyes because your eyes have seen and your ears because your ears have heard. For truly I say to you that many, and look at this next passage, many prophets and many righteous ones. Now in Hebrew, we have the phrase sadakim. Sadakim is someone who is righteous because they have trusted in God. They are committed to the promises of God. And their life reflects that by living in order to receive the promises of God. So once again, you and I need to ask ourselves that question. 
Does my life reflect that I am pursuing the promises of God? These disciples, some almost 2,000 years ago, they saw things, they heard things, but so do we. We are extremely blessed. That's why he says, blessed are the eyes and the ears that have seen and heard these things. Because, keep reading, he says, many of the prophets and many of the righteous ones, they desire to see what you see, but they did not see. And to hear what you hear, but they did not hear. So we are in a great position, a position to learn truth, have it planted within our heart so that we can produce, and here's the key of this parable, that we can produce much fruit. Here's a biblical truth. If you are committed to the kingdom of God, your life will have much fruit. Just that simple. There are laws, spiritual laws, and we're learning one in this parable of the sower. So we read in this section of Scripture that there were many who desired to see and to hear what these disciples heard, but they did not. Look now to verse 18. Therefore, hear, and this is a commandment. He makes it very emphatic. There's the word you speaking to the disciples. And we should understand that as speaking to us. So he says, once more, verse 18, Therefore hear the parable of the sower. All heard the word of the kingdom. Now notice that. Everyone heard the word of the kingdom. Remember, these four types of soil. Four, reminiscent, related to, it shows a connection to the world. And the truth of God went forth throughout the world. The question is not, is God faithful to sow? Yes, he is. The question is this, what type of soil am I? Am I that soil that is on the road? Or am I that soil that is rocky? Or that soil that is full of thorns? Or am I good soil? Now, it's not what you want to be. It's not what you like to be. It's what your life reveals. See, we are going to give a testimony, either a good testimony or one that's very displeasing to God. And it all depends upon what His truth, that word, that good seed does in our life. So, all the ones hearing the word of the kingdom, but did not understand. Now, someone might read that and, and not accurately come to the right understanding of that statement. Everyone who, who hears the words of what? The kingdom, but who does not understand. Now, if we don't pay attention to that word, close attention, that word for understanding, we're not going to arrive at the revelation, the truth that God would have us to understand. Because that word for understanding is unique. It is a compound word. There is the root and there's also a prefix. The root means to place something and the prefix means with or together. So this word for understanding implies this. I understand something and I respond. I move to what the instructions are. It means to put together. So here's the question. The truth of God that we see in the scripture, when we encounter it, when we hear it, does our lives move together with it? That's what understanding is. And he says here, for those individuals who hear, and it makes it very clear, who hears the words of the kingdom, but who does not understand, do not move towards it. What is it like? 
Well, this is what happens. When we don't respond, when we don't move together with the word of God, it's an invitation to the enemy, very clearly. Notice the second part of verse 19. The evil one, that's the enemy, that's Satan. The evil one comes, and what does he do? He snatches away quickly that which is is sown. Now, I want you to pay close attention to that phrase that, that I rendered here. It's really just one word in the Greek language, to snatch something away quickly. You know, there's many people that, that make statements that they really don't uh, have any business making. Now, we know that in the scripture, and I'm speaking of Titus chapter 2 in verse 13, it speaks there about a wonderful promise from God. What is that wonderful promise? Of the blessed hope. Now, frequently people call what, what Paul use the phrase blessed hope to describe most people call it the rapture and if you deny the rapture you are simply unscriptural in first thessalonians chapter 4 that same word appears for snatching something away quickly and it's not leaving something there and preserving it or protecting it but it's a removal the Greek word is arpazo. So here what we find is this. You are going to find in your life this experience. Someone, it's either going to be Messiah or the evil one. That they're going to move and they're going to move quickly to take away. They are either going to take you away, that would be Messiah. Take you away from this world and from the wrath that is about to fall. In those last days to remove you from it and to do so quickly or you are experienced a different one the evil one and he will snatch away quickly these words of the kingdom that they will not remain in you and he says here concerning that that the one who snatches away this evil one who snatches away which is sown in his heart this one's heart this is the one that the seed was sown on the way, along that, that hard ground, that pathway. Now look at verse 20. But upon the rocky ground it was sown. This is the one, so he wants to give us an understanding. The rocky ground, this is the one that hears the word and immediately with joy receives it. Now, that may sound good at first, but there's a problem. He hears the word of God immediately without much thought, without much reflection, without much true understanding. He just receives it with joy. Now, there is much to rejoice about in the promises of God. But we also are going to see that before we are snatched away, Prior to the wrath of God, we talked about this a few weeks ago, that true disciples, on account of his name, whose name? Yeshua's, Jesus Christ, his name. We are going to be persecuted. We are going to be hated. We are going to suffer. We are going to be tortured. And many will be put to death. Now, this one, this rocky ground, he hears, he rejoices, he receives it seemingly at once. But notice what the scripture says. But because he has no seed or root in himself, we read that quickly or, or very soon, what happens? Well, what the scripture tells us is this that all of this reception is temporal because when comes the tribulation or the persecution. Now, the word for tribulation is just that thalipsis, and it means to suffer, but here's the key. It is not suffering from the hand of God. 
No, this word for tribulation, and by the way, if you look in Acts chapter 14 and verse 22, we have a very important verse. It says it is necessary to, to go through much tribulation, not the wrath of God. We won't experience any of God's wrath. But it's necessary to go through much tribulation to enter in to the kingdom. Well, here, what happens is this. This one who seemingly made a profession. He had joy, but he really didn't understand that profession, what he was doing. Because when the tribulation and the persecution came, what does the scripture say? When it came because of the word, immediately he stumbled. He was, and the word means to be offended. It means to be, we know the word, a scandal. A scandal is shocked. Shocking. Someone hears a scandal and they're amazed by it. And this is what it's saying about this individual. That when persecution comes because of the word, because tribulation comes because of the true faith, faith in Messiah Yeshua, he is shocked by that. He's, he's not prepared for that. He was unaware of that. And what happens? He immediately turns away. That's what the scripture is saying. This is those who are what? Well, these are those who are, are on the rocky ground. Move on to verse 22. But the one among the thorns, this word is sown. It says, this is the one who hears the word also. Not because of necessarily persecution. Not because of tribulation. But what does it say? Because of the cares of this world. See, you need to ask yourself a question. What am I interested in? What am I committed to? Am I committed to the kingdom of God at all costs? No matter what may happen, I'm going to remain faithful. I am going to seek and rely and trust in the provision of the Holy Spirit in order that I endure, that I persevere, that I keep going forward. Or are you someone that is committed, interested in, all wrapped up in the world? If you are committed to the world, you are going to be focused in, as it says here, on the cares of this world. And notice something else. It says, and the deceit of riches. Now, this means wealth. And I believe, and hear this carefully, I believe this, I know it because the scripture is teaching this. And that is wealth. Now, you can receive wealth and prosperity, and you can use that and be a great steward of it. But let me tell you, that is rare. Does it happen? Yes, it does. Do I know many people who have the spiritual maturity to handle wealth? Yes, I do. But those are the exceptions. For most people, wealth, that pursuit of it, that love of it, will bring about them being deceived. And that's what the scripture is speaking about. Because of the deceit of wealth, what happens? Well, what happens is this. That the cares of this world, the deceit of wealth, remember where they are. We're speaking about those who are among the thorns. That type of soil. And those things choke out the word. And it does not produce, does not give Fruit, it is fruitless. Verse 23. But here's what we should strive to be. Notice what it says. Verse 23. But upon the good ground, that seed is sown. Now remember, that word good has to do with the will of God. You are good soil if you're interested in the will of God. Someone who says, God, above all things, I want to be in your will. I want to walk in your ways. I want to do the things that are pleasing to you. I want to bring honor and glory to you. And when you are sincere and you are single-minded on that, not double-minded, not doubtful, but when you are totally committed to that, 
you're going to be amazed of how God begins to move in your life how he provides, how he brings his provision, his resources to you. So you can be just that, a godly individual with a powerful testimony and one for all of eternity. You're going to be that one that God says, he is my faithful servant. She is one that I'm well pleased with. And I assure you, if that will describe you, you will never have any regret. Here's the sad truth. Most people in this world, in fact, most people that are hearing my voice right now, you are going to spend eternity with regrets. Because of why? Because you were not kingdom-minded, because you were not committed to the truth of the kingdom, the word of God. And Messiah, don't blame him. What does he do? He sows in all the soils. You may just happen to be that soil on the way, on the rocks, or among the thorns. Now, who's he talking about here? He's talking about the good soil. Those individuals that are connected to the will of God. Look again at verse 23. But upon the good land it is sown. This is the one that hears the word. Now, what's interesting here is that throughout this passage, I've been translating it as we speak in English rather than how the Greek does. And what I mean by that is this. Consistently, the Greek text puts the phrase, the word, the word of God, the word of the kingdom, the word of God, prior to hearing. There's a change in order. And what is that? For the purpose of emphasis. God wants to emphasize in this passage over and over we see it. His word, his truth, his revelation concerning the kingdom of God. So let me ask you, do you emphasize his word, his truth to the kingdom of God? Remember how we began. Are you kingdom minded? If someone looks at your life and had to give a description concerning you, would they say that you are someone who is committed to the things of the kingdom, that you are pursuing the promises of God. That's what made Avraham and Yitzchak and Yaakov, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob different because their life reflected a commitment to the covenantal promises, those blessings that having a right relationship with the living God through Messiah Jesus, only that can cause you to be a recipient of those promises so he says this is the one the word hearing and also what happens well here's that phrase for he understands and again it's that same word which means something a little bit different in the greek language it means to place oneself with together with something so you understand something, you make a decision. That's what it's speaking here. But it's a visible. It is a word of testimony. It's just not understanding it in your mind. But your actions, your words, your behavior equally manifest this understanding. And it says, this is the one who truly produces fruit. And he does so how? A hundredfold. 60-fold or 30-fold. What do we see here? There's going to be an outcome. And this is so important. Why is that? Because we need to learn a biblical truth. We know that the scripture tells us something. That the word of God does not return void. And there is absolutely no exceptions to that. Here's the consequence of that statement. If the word of God remains in you and messiah yeshua taught much about this in the gospel of john if his word remains in you he says that he will remain in you and what's the implication of that your life is going to be transformed there is going to be clear visible evidence here's what's not going to happen you are not going to be someone who knows the truth up here, 
but it never really penetrates into your heart. And therefore, you're not going to live a life that is in obedience to Scripture and then have God pleased with you. That's not going to happen. In fact, those who truly know God, it says, to confess with your mouth and to believe with your heart. I want to emphasize that for a moment. To believe with your heart. Now, it says a couple things about that. First of all, to believe in Messiah Yeshua. Not just that he died, but also that he rose from the dead. And I am so grieved that there are individuals, and some of them have big platforms, big churches, and they're kind of just putting down that, that whole concept of inviting Messiah into your heart. There is nothing wrong with that. I've said this before, and I'm going to continue saying it. That's the implication of believing. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, bowing the knee, confessing that Yeshua is who? As Paul says, that he is Lord. And that's what a kingdom-minded person understands, that he is Lord. And when that truth enters into your heart, when you open yourself up for the Master's power, His love, His provision, you know what happens? Always, always there's an outcome. What type of outcome? A God-pleasing outcome. And your life will be fruitful in the things of God, in good deeds, in the fulfillment of His Word, in your life, and you will invest your life in others. And as he says here, you will produce fruit. There will be a yield, a yield of a hundredfold, sixtyfold, or thirtyfold. This is truth. What we need to realize is it's the faithfulness of God that produces the harvest. The question is this Am I really interested? In his harvest or am I someone who is consumed by the cares of this world who have been deceived by by wealth and riches and they're pursuing of carnal temporal fleshly physical things no we need to be we must be people who have a commitment to the kingdom of God not just in mind, but also indeed that we might be individuals that are well-pleasing to our Lord and Savior, Messiah, Yeshua. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.